Hello YouTube, Robert Alvarez, the Psychic Witch, also known as Mr. Lighting and a Fan. Good evening to all of you in YouTube land. And here we are with the official Llewellyn's 2024 tarot calendar for June 2024. And of course I'm going to have Drake, more commonly known as my awesome audiovisual person, for my YouTube videos do a close-up of the front cover of the calendar. I love the gorgeous black with gold. I mean, I've seen other colors that, that I find more appealing, like the purple and the green and the red and whatnot, but I like the black with the gold. This is the back of the cover of, this is the back cover of the calendar, rather. And now we will go to June 2024. So we have the Queen of Cups from the Rider Waite Smith Tarot. We have this symbol. We have an article called Things Held, which I'm very intrigued about. And then we have a blessing. And of course, I find it so appropriate that this card is the card for June because um, in June, the sun enters Cancer. And um, for some people, the queens in the tarot represent cardinal signs. Cardinal water is cancer. And um, I'm just going to do a quick look up in my Llewellyn's 2024 Daily Planetary Guide to see when the sun officially enters cancer this year. Thursday, June 20th, 2024 is the date when the sun enters Cancer. Of course, in the Northern Hemisphere, it is also the date of the summer solstice, which um, some magical traditions call Litha, capital L-I-T-H-A. Of course, other magical traditions may refer to it as Midsummer. And of course, in the Southern Hemisphere, this is the first day of winter. So, yes. So, this is what the Barbara Moore wrote about the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is sensitive, kind, and empathetic. She values beauty, relationships, peace, and quiet introspection. Everyone has challenging qualities, even this queen, who can be too sensitive, needy, and emotionally manipulative. By the way, um, my personal psychic advisor, Roger Pratt, is a sun sign cancer. And he's the one who taught me that cancer people are emotionally manipulative. In other words, a sun sign cancer told me that sun sign cancer people are emotional manipulators. What does that tell you? Mm. Let me spill my coffee. Oops, I meant my tea. <laughs> Mm. Anyway, the symbol, the chalice, more commonly known as the cup. The queen's ornate angel flanks chalice represents the sacred aspect of relationships. For this queen, connections with others are most important. The lid indicates that she does keep some things to herself. And I'm going to have Drake do a quick close-up of the chalice. And notice the angels that flank the, the chalice, the cup. I'm not, I'm not used to using the term chalice. What was that direction, Drake? I didn't... Okay. Um, thank you. I'm not used to referring to it as a chalice, even though that is an, an, an accurate description and term for a cup. So this article is intriguing to me. It's called Things Held. During the Middle Ages, the mostly illiterate world, quote-unquote, read the stained glass windows, stained glass windows, and friezes in churches. F-R-I-E-Z-E-S, by the way. Saints and characters were recognized by clothing and things they carried, which is very interesting because... All I need to do is look at an archangel carrying a sword, and my mind immediately goes to Archangel Michael, also known as Saint Michael. 
we can, um, just like in tarot, almost everything was symbolic. We can apply this to our cards. Observing what a character holds and how they hold it indicates what they value most and how they use it. This creates a focus in the cards, which contains so many meanings. In the Rider White Smith decks Nine of Pentacles, the woman holds a falcon, a symbol of dedication, diligence, and skill. The person in the Two of Wands holds a wand and a globe, which we can interpret as using power to gain dominion. Observing images in this way can clarify interpretations. So I'm going to have Drake do one last close-up of the Queen of Cups from the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. So I'm going to have Drake, more commonly known as my awesome audio-visual person for my YouTube videos, do one last final close-up of the Queen of Cups from the Rider, Rider Waite Smith tarot. So given the article I just read, Things Held, she's holding a cup. It is not a coincidence that the regular playing card counterpart of cups in the tarot is hearts. She's holding a cup in the Queen of Cups because she is the Queen of Cups. But given its playing card correspondence, she's holding her heart in her hand. And it is um, both hands. So she's holding her cup in both of her hands as if she wants to give someone the cup, as if she wants to extend the cup to someone. Cups are symbolic of hearts. They're symbolic of emotions. So here I am holding my cup, which is a blue cup corresponding to the element of water, interestingly enough, in both of my hands. So it's like, let me nourish you. Let me nourish your soul. Let me nourish your emotions. Let me heal your emotions. Let me open my heart to you. It's very, this, this, this article is intriguing me in a very big way. Because I'm like, you know, I never thought of that. So you know the next time I use tarot for a reading, which will be in two days for a phone reading, I'm going to be looking at what the people, and the characters in the cards are holding. Hmm. Very interesting. Hello, Segment. Segment is one of my kittens. Are you going to come up here? That'd be lovely. You want to come up here? Come on. Come on. No, don't scratch me. Okay, fine. You do what you want. And last but not least, we have the blessing. Relationships are two-way streets. We give and we receive, and we hope that everyone benefits. Personally, I think that they're not two-way streets. I think that they are opportunities to give 100% of oneself to another and ideally receive 100% of that individual as well. Regardless of the relationship, romantic, professional, familial, etc., friendship. We give and we receive and we hope that everyone benefits. People are complicated. No comment. So a little extra magic as we approach these intricate treasures is welcome. May your heart beat the rhythm of love, a call to others, a declaration of intent. May your love for others be healthy, nourishing, delightful. Oh, what a beautiful blessing. Especially because so many people have so much bullshit around romantic relationships. I will tell you one time, I said something publicly. And I said, and this was the first time I ever said this, I said, so long as a woman asks, does he love me? I will never be a starving psychic. Some people got very upset about that. To the point that they were like, you know, I didn't like that you said that. Over the years, I've learned that they didn't like how true that was. 
Oh, you got triggered. Oh, you got triggered. Oh, okay. Well, it's the truth. And over the years, I've modified that that statement because not everybody who comes to me is a heterosexual woman. The fact of the matter is that there are a lot of people that ask about romantic relationships. Ironically, I never did. I was just like, why bother? And here I am on the verge of having 13 years with the same life partner in the longest, most loving, most devoted, and most functional romantic relationship he and I have ever had. Go figure. But yeah, I was never one to ask about romance. I was always about spirituality and money and clientele and, you know, how to be as happy as possible. That's what I would ask when I would go to have a reading. And these days I also ask about health concerns, like, you know, is there something I need to worry about, something I need to focus on, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, so as always, I am ever thankful to Llewellyn Publications for after a full decade, resuming the publication of a new tarot-themed annual. I will include the... Hello, Sekhmed! You came into the video! You're so cute! Oh my God, is you're too cute! No, see, 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 here, see, here, see, here. Because <laughs> somebody needs to do a close-up of you, isn't that right? You're so cute, super cute! Look at you, cutie, 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 cutie! I love you so much! Your, your ear is a little chilly and wet. I don't know why. Are you probably at the sink or something? And isn't that right? Yes, I know. You'll get dry and warm very soon. But I also want to thank the Barbara Moore for writing the insights, spreads, and tips. And as always, thank you to those of you who buy these calendars. Because the more you buy these calendars, the more you talk about these calendars and post about these calendars and do videos about these calendars, the longer and the more committed Llewellyn Publications ideally will be to publishing even more of these calendars. And Llewellyn's 2025 tarot calendar, I have known about since February or March of this year. And I will include a link to both this year's calendar and next year's calendar in the description box for this video. So thank you to all of you in YouTube land for all the likes, all the comments, all the shares and all the subscriptions to my YouTube channel. And an extra big and beautiful thank you to those of you who have already scheduled your sessions, including the individual who's going to have a phone reading with me this Friday. May 24th, 2024. I wish all of you a beautiful night and a wonderful weekend. And of course, as always, stay in tune with your intuition. Stay safe, stay well, stay hydrated, and stay tuned for the next video.